okay? My usual statement, I'm in the kitchen again. Aren't you a bit surprised that I came back so soon? Well, we're going to start off first thing first. I'm going to move back so you can see. Can you still see? You know what that says? This is my apron. It says chit chat with Granny Pat. I pull this up so you can see the bottom of it a little bit. Well, maybe you can see it better if I just hold it out. Gosh, you know what? I look pregnant, don't I? I don't think that's possible, but eh, yeah, well, it is what it is. But the important thing is that you look at my pretty apron. Chit chat with Granny Pat. I just love it. I think I'm the cutest little thing ever was. Take a close look. Now I'll get up a little bit closer. And I don't know if I can lift it. There we go. Hey, like that. Jessica did that. Smart girl, isn't she? I think she enjoyed doing it too. But I think it's so cute. Now, the thing about it is, I don't want to get my pretty apron dirty. And when you're working with tomatoes and tomato sauce, you know what's going to happen. It's going to... There'll be. So I'm going to be real careful today. Now, the other thing I want to show you after I get the ringing out of my hearing aid, the other thing I want to show you is... Most of you have already seen this, but I want to show it to you again. This is the mug. See, the inside is black, nice and thick. It's a good size mug. And I'm telling you, you fill this up with your coffee, and you're going to sit down and enjoy a hot cup of coffee to the last drop. Folks, this hearing aid driving me, driving me crazy. I'm going to take it out, and you're just going to have to deal with me. Hope I don't drop it down the sink. Okay, we're going back. My mug. Take a close look now. I want you to, well, get that glare off. There we go. The up or down. Well, just so you can see it. There you can see it good. I love this mug. You will too. And you can order it on Etsy. So we'll take care of that deal. My little camera I'm using now is one of those little bitty ones. And I learned how to put it on my uh, stick thing, you know. A tripod. Put it on my tripod so that you can see both sides of my kitchen at the same time. I don't have to twist and turn, twist and turn. That's in your favor as well as mine. This is the sink side. This is the stove side. And the problem is you're going to see everything, good or bad, so don't take too close a look. You're supposed to be watching me. You're supposed to be listening to me. And the most important thing is what I tell you. Well, sort of important if it works. I told you the other day I was going to make you a meatloaf because I bought a lot of uh, ground beef. My hamburgers. I'm still eating those hamburgers. My sister called me and she said, I saw that and she said, it just makes me so hungry I wish I had one of them. And she said, those were thick burgers. How did you get them done? And I said, well, I wasn't sure it was going to happen because they were so thick and I couldn't pat them out because the skillet wasn't big enough. And But I said when I, I finished with them, they were done all the way through and I was very surprised. So they are very thick hamburgers and I've got three of them left in the freezer for when I run out of something to eat. Today may be one of those days because I haven't had lunch yet and it's 2.30. 
I'm getting hungry. So back to the meatloaf. I've got, now first I want to tell you this. Meatloaf is meatloaf. What you put in it is your personal preference. But what I'm giving you is the basic recipe. You can do anything you want to with it. You can add your spices, you can add herbs, you can add... Some people, one lady one time tell me about how wonderful her son's meatloaf was. I don't know if it was rice or if it was corn that he put in that meatloaf. So I said, okay, I'll give it a try. Uh-uh, no, that wasn't meatloaf. I thought, whoa, some people have odd taste buds. Meatloaf is made with meat and tomatoes. And then you add the other things to it. Now I've got about a pound and a half here of 80-20 ground beef and pork. About half and half is pork. That's the way they used to make the meatloaf when Mama made it. Now what I'm going to do, sometimes I add diced tomatoes, sometimes I add just tomato sauce, but today I'm going to add tomato puree. You got the tomato in the sauce. So I need to open the can. This is my old Bakelite opener. Got to open this. It's hard to open. There we go. Get the can open first. And then I'm going to show you something that will really interest you. I'm just going to leave that sitting right there. Because I'm going to set this on the stove for the time being. i got a surprise for you. Oh, you remember the... I love Lucy shows and the... What do they call these things? I've already forgotten what it's called, but I want you to see this. This is old, probably one of the first ones made. See how that works? And it's got these dials, different size. You can slice, you can grate, you can cut. And you know, I'll bet I've had this 40 years and it's never been used. And I said, I'm going to try it today. We're going to experiment with it. But I want you to see. See, this is one of the little discs. Now, I've got to get this over something. I'm going to do it right on my uh, cutting board. Because I'm going to chop an onion for you. Let me find that onion. Here's the onion, and this is, I've shown you this before too, but some of you forget, like I do. You see this little thing? It looks kind of dark, doesn't it? Well, let me show you what that is. Let me get it over here. I'm afraid it's going to, the onion peeling is going to come off. Well, I'll get it out. Here we go. Let me pull it over there and get the onion out. Now, look what I've got here. You know what this is? This is the toe of a knee high. Take your old knee highs, wash them good, and you want to keep your onion from getting bad, mushy, whatever. You drop one onion down in the toe of your knee high, and then you tie a knot. Got to show you how that's done, right here. I've shown you this before, but I want you to see it again. This onion was cut from the bottom, but you have to cut it below the knot so that this onion doesn't fall out. 
Now the next time you need an onion, you cut it right here, just below the knot, where you made a knot. And see, this one's got a little space in between it. it I got the knot, knot tied a little higher, but you take them one at a time. Now you keep these in a, a dark, cool place, and your onions will not rot on you. You can use them to the very last one. I had eight onions, two, four and four, eight of them. I'm down to three now, and I want you to see how this is done. This is a knee high, and the top of it, I just found this little hook in the bathroom where I dry my panties and bras sometimes on the shower rod. And I said, well, that's gonna work perfect. I'll just hang it on that little thing. And right over here, I'll hang it up where you can see it. See there? You might have a, a little pantry or someplace just perfect. Got the country kitchen. This is gonna work great. It, they look good in the country kitchen. Now I took my little knee high. This goes in the garbage. Now you can't use it anymore. But I'm going to uh, cut my onion. Let's see if I can get here where you can see it. Okay. Cut my onion here. And here. And I'm going to get this, put this in the sink. Get that off there out of the way. Now, I'm going to cut my onion. Can you see me? Okay, cut my onion like that. And just get this outer layer off. Now, I've never used this. Keep in mind, I might be a failure. That's the way I'm, I fail at a lot of things. But I don't want this to be one of them because it's such a simple little thing that every cook knows how to do. And I'm learning. Okay, let's get these little peels off into the sink. We'll take care of that later. Now, I'm going to take What they call these moolies? What they call moolies? Okay. I'm going to cut this in about three slices. And I'm going to put it in this little pocket. Let me show you the pocket. I'm afraid I'm getting out of camera range. Put it in this little pocket. I'll take the first one. This may not work, folks, but we're going to give it a try anyway. There we go. Drop that down in there. And I'm going to push that down. And I'm going to see, see which way I have to go. We're going to, oh, I want you to look. I want you to see what's happening. Can you see this? I'm gonna have to turn this a little bit. I want you to be sure and see it. Okay. I'm left-handed. They forget that I'm left-handed when they made this because they thought everybody was right-handed. But look what happened. Okay, I've got to push it down. I think it's coming out. No, well, let's go the other way. There we go. Now I may end up with half of this in the floor. Can you see what's falling out on this? I probably should have used another disc, but I didn't know which one to use. So anyway, we're going to stay with this one. I'll get my onion down in there again. There we go. I have to press that good. Now let's see if it's gonna work. 
Something's not working. I gotta turn it around, it suits me. It's not working. I think, yeah, I know what happened. This little thing came out of the hole. I gotta get it back down in the hole. It's not gonna work until I get it down in that hole. There we go. Now, are you still with me? Goodness gracious, wouldn't I be great? Great Julia Childs. Oh yeah. Now here we go again. Look at that. It's slicing those onions. Really good. You gotta press down on it though. Don't you like this idea? This thing's an old thing. Who needs a new one when you got an old one that works? All right, back up. Not quite finished. I'm going to cut this half of the onion. Here we go. Going to put it in there. We're going to keep, keep going. This may take up half our time. Why? Yeah, it takes a lot of pressure. I didn't think it'd be that much trouble. This is fun. Why haven't I tried this before? One more piece of onion. And we'll be almost finished with this. This is just the first step. I may use this more often. Now this didn't cut quite right. It kind of slid out, but that's okay. There we go. Let's get some of that onion out of there. Now folks, don't you wish you had one of these? You can buy the new ones. I'm going to stick with the old one. And, of course, you can see, kind of long, so I'm going to just take my knife and just go through it like this so we can cut it smaller. We don't want long pieces. We want small pieces because this is going to go in our meatloaf. And we don't want stringy onions in the meatloaf. Now that was a small onion and it's starting to make my eyes water. All right, where's my bowl? Get this out of the way. Here's my bowl. Got my meat in it. I'm going to uh, I'm going to rake my onions right in there. Now that's a small one, like I told you. I'm going to set this over here out of the way. My onions are in with the meat. Let's see what goes next. What do you put in meatloaf? I've already forgotten. I'm going to use the tomato puree. Now, I may not need this whole can, but I'll mix it up and we'll see. We'll see if I need more of it. You see what size can it is. Okay. Let me get my big spoon out where I can mix this up. Get it started. I used to always use diced tomatoes, but I've found lately that uh, using the diced tomatoes makes the meatloaf a little loose. And it's hard, you can't slice it good if you were making sandwiches. It'd come out in clumps, you know. So, 
I'm just going to try the puree and see how it works. It won't make that much difference. It's all tomato. Okay. Ordinarily, I put in one egg. For this amount, I'm going to put in two eggs because eggs help hold the meat together. So I'm just going to put it right in there. Stir that in a little bit. Get it started. Blending a little. Now, mix the egg in. Mama always put a slice of light bread that's been wet. Now, you saw how I did the light bread, uh, how I wet it before I put it in my hamburger. It lets it, uh, it, it blends better, small, you don't have chunky bread. This time, I'm not going to use the light bread. We're going to try, God, this is mixing really good. We're going to try crackers. I ground up some, uh, the club crackers. You know those club crackers? I love those things. Now, th this is about six or eight crackers right here. Not very much, but it'll be enough to help hold this together. All I have to do is start blending. Get it together. I want to turn my oven on. And my knob has lost its numbers, and I have to guess at the temperature. So I'm guessing it at about 425. And we'll see how the oven heats. I'm going to stand right here and stir this meatloaf. It's looking good. I keep thinking I'm forgetting something. When you don't make things very often, you get it in the oven after about 15 minutes, you remember, oh, I forgot to put the eggs in, or I forgot to put the sugar in. Yeah, I do that a lot. I didn't put enough crackers in this. And I'm gonna leave it as is and see what happens. Next time I'll know to add either more crackers or to put white bread in. Now this looks good. See, here's what I've got. There it is, got the onions in there. Next thing I'm going to do, now a lot of people don't like green pepper. I like green pepper in potato salad. I like green pepper in my um, lettuce salads. Oh, and my, uh, let's see what else. There are two or three. Uh, seven layer salad, you gotta have green pepper. And I like a little bit of green pepper in my meatloaf. People who don't like green pepper, leave it out. But this is about a quarter cup. And I diced it fine. Can you see it? It's kind of dark, isn't it? Well, anyway. You can see it's small, and I don't know if I want this much or not, because I don't want to overpower it with the green pepper, but I think a quarter cup is going to do it. It just gives it that added touch, and salt and pepper, you know how to salt and pepper, I don't have to tell you that. I'm going to add... Now this is garlic and herbs. I haven't had this very long, but some people like garlic in their meatloaf, and I don't think this is going to be very strong. I don't know what kind of herbs they are, but we're going to experiment with them. And I'm just going to sprinkle a few uh, with the garlic and herbs. It won't be too much. And let's see. Uh, actually, I add more pepper. Gotta have some pepper in your meatloaf. Okay, that ought to do it. You know how to measure with your spices. Every, if you cook at all, 
That's one thing you learn. You just shake it till you know it's right. All right. We want to get that blended good, incorporated. That's what we're having to do. We need to incorporate. I don't want to forget that word. My mother would have flipped out if I'd walked in the kitchen and said, Mama, have you got that incorporated? She'd have looked at me like I was a nut. They didn't use words like that when they were cooking. You used a dab of this and a pinch of that and a dollop. Got a lot of dollops. I believe I've got enough onion in here. It doesn't look like it, but I think because it was cut fine, that's why I'm not seeing it. Now, this looks good to me. Let's see. I'm going to add a little bit more the puree. There we go. I want to be sure I've got enough. Don't want to cut short on my tomatoes off. All right. I happen to have two nice loaf pans here. One's a little bigger than the other one, so I'm going to use the big one first. But I'm also going to, uh, I'm going to put a little oil in the bottom. Not much, just enough to uh, kind of coat the bottom of the pan a little bit. Roll it around some. I need to wipe this out again. Hold on just a minute. Who's on it? Just a minute. I should have done this before I started. Hold on. I'll get me a paper towel here. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to wipe it out a little bit first. Should have done that in the first place. But you know how it is when you're cooking. You don't do everything perfect right first time. I don't ever do anything perfect. Now we're going to start all over again. I don't even think I need the uh, oil this time. I'm going to put, now you watch me, put this hamburger meat in here. I hope I can get it all in one pan, but I'm not sure I can. See what I'm doing? Spreading it out in the bottom. Keep adding. There's one more. Yep, this is going to work. In fact, I'm going to be ready to eat it the minute it comes out of the oven. There we go. Hey, this is going to be perfect for this large pan. I'll only have to use one. But I want enough room left at the top for the juices because, you know, a lot of the sauce and the uh, grease comes out at the top. Now, what I'm going to do... is go around the edges of my meatloaf pan. Get over here out of the way. I want to smooth it out. Nice. That gives me plenty of room. I'll show you what I'm going to do. Yep, that's going to 
spread out just find it perfect for this pan. Now what I do is I go around the edge and put a little ditch along the edge. That's for the grease and liquid to fall down into so it doesn't come up over the side. I'm doing this around all four sides. And it's just a little ditch, that's all it is. You don't have all that grease on top of your meatloaf. Okay, I've done that. My next step is I've got about a quarter cup of uh, ketchup. My mind goes blank sometimes. You just have to overlook me when I stare at you trying to figure out what I was going to say. Ketchup. About a quarter cup. And this time I decided I had some honey barbecue sauce. And I squeezed, where is that? Yeah, here it is. Here's the bar barbecue sauce. This is what I used right here. Honey barbecue sauce. Just about a tablespoonful I added to the ketchup. Now, it depends on how big your meatloaf is as to how much you use. So I'm going to spread this across the top of my meatloaf. I think it'll be enough to cover the top. I'm just guessing at the measurement. So I'll get all of that out of the cup. Quarter cup of ketchup. And a tablespoonful of honey barbecue sauce. This is going over the top of my meatloaf. It's looking pretty. Yeah, this is going to work. We're going to have a nice, pretty meatloaf here. But, now we used to put a strip or two of bacon on top of our meatloaf here, so I'm not doing that today because I have a problem finding good lean bacon. It just isn't out there. And I don't want the thick, tough, fatty bacon. Here is about a oh, quarter to half cup of Light brown sugar. Let's see. Let me use a spoon for this. And I like the brown sugar on top of my meatloaf in, mi mixed in with the ketchup and the barbecue sauce. I think it just gives the meatloaf a finished flavor, a good flavor. So I'm going to sprinkle this brown sugar over the top. Now some people would probably mix the brown sugar with the ketchup, but I don't. I like to sprinkle it over the top of my meatloaf. I like that sweet flavor that comes from the brown sugar. I'll show it to you as soon as I get this finished. This is such a simple recipe. I don't know why people have a problem figuring out how to make a meatloaf. I, it's the plainest thing, the easiest thing you can make if you've got good ground beef, you've got no problem. You add whatever you want to your meatloaf. I think I've got just about enough. 
brown sugar here. I'll show you, and I didn't use but half of that. See, see, this was my little jade eye. This is my measuring cup. Have to be careful with that because these things are rare. Can't find them anywhere. Right here is the finished product. I don't want it sliding out on me, but I want you to be able to see it. It looks pretty, and if you decide you want a slice of bacon, just lay it across the top, and there's nothing that will flavor a meatloaf better than bacon. I've got a couple of pans here in my oven because I didn't have any place to put them. So I've got to take those out so that I can get my meatloaf in. These are those little old pie pans and I use those for toast and things like that. So I've got to get this pan out if I can get my fingers on it without burning myself. I am the world's worst when it comes to stuff like this. Well, it's just going to stay in there. All right. Where's my meatloaf? Okay, here it is. Yeah, I think I've got the brown sugar just right. I'm going to slide it in. I keep a big flat pan in my oven in case there spills something boils over, runs over. I don't want it all over the oven, so I keep a big sheet pan on the bottom shelf of the oven. Now, right now it's three o'clock. I'm going to guess this will take 45 minutes to an hour. Depends on your oven temperature. 400 to 425. I put mine at where I think is 425. I'll check it in about 30 minutes. And if I think I need to turn the heat down, I will. Because I don't want it to burn on the outside and not be done on the inside. So, if you've ever made a meatloaf in your life, you know how to check and see if they're done. And sometimes I just take them out knife at the end of the at the loaf pan, I cut across and I check that end slice to see if it's really done. I've never had to put one back in the oven when I did that. It was done. So, you know how to do that too. Now that takes care of my meatloaf for today. And I'm kind of anxious to see how it's going to come out. See my little jadeite bowl? I thought, you know, just sitting over here in the corner gathering dust, I might as well be using them. And if I break one, I break it. That's all there is to it. I've already done that. I've, I broke one of my little spice jars, which is one of the hardest thing to find and when I did I just sat down on the couch for 30 minutes and cried. What else you gonna do? You can't bring it back. Well not exactly but I tell you what I did do. Let me see where that is. Here it is. Okay. This is my little ginger jar. See how pretty that is? You can't find these very easy. Look at the little lid. You know that if anything's gonna get broken, it's gonna be a little flat lid like this. Well, the lid didn't break, but the ginger jar did. And I don't know if you can see the line. You might be able to see the little crack here and over here and Look down at the bottom. You see a crack across the bottom. And let me see where else. Anyway, basically, that's the part that broke. 
In fact, here's a little piece that goes across the top. Drop it down in there. It goes right up here at the top. But you know what? It's not the monetary value of this that matters to me. You can see the little crack right in there. Can you see that little crack? Where one little piece was and there was another crack. That's all right. I don't mind that because I like to look at it. I think it's pretty. It's old. It's a keepsake. No, I can't sell it for anything. Don't want to sell it for anything. I want to keep it. It has memories for me. And the memories were in finding the lid to it. It didn't have a lid when I bought it. It was two years later in an antique mall that I spotted this little lid lying on a big long table of men tool, carpenter tool. And right at the front of that table was this little flat lid. I took one look and I said, that's my spice jar lid. Well, it took a little looking to find the owner of the, uh, or the dealer of all those tools. And I told the lady, I said, if he doesn't show up soon, I'm going to leave a dollar and I'm taking this lid with me. Well, about that time he walked up. And I said, what do you take for this? And he said, dollar. So, I still have my little ginger jar. No value to anybody else but me. And you know what? When I found this, it was the first year of the 127 yard sale. Now, you know what I mean by that. The 127 highway goes from way, I don't know, maybe it starts up in Maine, and it drifts down, down and down, into the Appalachian area, era, area. And I didn't even know it was the first year of the sale. I was with a friend. As we were coming back, we had driven down to Chattanooga, just on a... A jolly trip, you know. We spent the night in Chattanooga where they had the Jack Daniels, uh, where they make Jack Daniels. We didn't buy any, but we at least saw where they make it. And we left Chattanooga coming back. That's when I spotted this little, little bitty building on the side of the road, and I knew the lady was having a yard sale. We didn't know what the 127 yard sale was at the time. And that's when I found my ginger jar. Now, I've been on quite a few of those 127 yard sales. I have bought quite a few things and so has Jan. It's a fun thing to do if you like old stuff. You gotta like old stuff. And you can find some really good bargain. So you got nothing better to do. I don't remember if it's in June or if it's in August. But you can look it up on the internet, find out about the yard sale, and get in your car with your friends and say, come on, let's take some cash money with us, and we're going to go yard sailing. So, it's fun. You take a picnic lunch with you, and you drive as far as you want to drive, going south or north, either direction you, just depends on where you live. So, I'm giving you the rundown on the 127 yard sale, and I swear, it's fun. It, 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 if it's not something you do anyway, try it for a change. Look and see what people are selling. They're selling grandma's stuff. They're selling their dead husband tools, and he's hats and his boots and things like that and you find lots of food vendors along the way and you will meet some very unusual people and i tell you what jan and a couple friends we went to one oh this been several years ago 
and we went through Carlisle, Kentucky. We went on up through Maysville. Oh, beautiful old Victorian home, just gorgeous, right on, right on the river. And we went, we drove on over another 15 miles to a little place called Augusta. No, you don't know where it is. It's on the river though. We'd never been there. Well, guess, guess who lived there? George Clooney's parents lived there. We saw their house. We met George's mother. She was so cute, so pretty. This just just before George got married. They, they were getting ready to take the trip overseas to the wedding. And she had a, a gift shop there. Now, a lot of the stuff in her gift shop, it was called Nina's. The girl with Jan and me, name was Nina, both spelled N-I-N-A. So you had Nina and Nina, and of course we got to take pictures of them together. And uh, Mrs. Clooney was just so delightful, and a lot of the things in her shop had belonged to Rosemary Clooney. She pointed out a few things to us, and she told us where Rosemary's house was, facing the river. So we drove through town. We found a small little cafe. They they were uh, having a little festival that day too. So the, the streets were more or less blocked off. So we walked and we walked and we drove and we, we got to go into an old jail. I'm talking about Western movie old. And we played around like a bunch of kids in that jail. Had our pictures made standing there behind the bars. And I'm telling you, just being inside that old jail was enough for me. To think I would be living in the days of when that jail had to be used for prisoners. Don't think I would have lasted very long. But... We got a kick out of getting to tour the jail. They let us go through it. And it, it, it's such fun when you can get out like that and see things you've never seen before. You've seen them in the movies, but you've never seen them in person. So I can tell you where Rosemary Clooney lived before she became famous. I can tell you where George Clooney grew up and where he went to school before he got famous. And his father, Nick Clooney, all years ago was on Cincinnati radio stations like a disc jockey. He played the good old popular music. And when I traveled from Tennessee to Kentucky, on weekend, I always turn my radio to Nick Clooney's radio show and got to listen to those good old Patty Page and, uh, you know, the old singers, all of the good singers, Linda Ronstadt and uh, the McGuire sisters, those good songs and the quartets and the trios and all wonderful music. And before you know it, I was in Lexington. I said, gee, where did the time go? I was listening to Nick Clooney with the popular music. So I th thought you might be interested in that little piece of history. Uh, in fact, Jan has a, I have a picture of Jan and Nick Clooney standing together and they make a handsome couple. So wish I'd thought about it. I'd gotten the picture out and shown it to you. So anyway, we we're killing 15 minutes of baking time now talking to you. So I'm going to leave the meatloaf in the oven. Now you'll have to get back with me for the next video before you'll know whether or not it was a good meatloaf. And I'll tell the truth about it because I don't know how to tell a lie. 
that's one thing you can be sure of. I'd get caught every time if I was trying to lie to you. Take another look at my pretty. Oh, I have to lift it up so you can see it. I want you to see that pretty face. Isn't that cute? That's me. Can't you tell? Oh, I don't have my glasses on. Isn't that cute? So, and I've got a t-shirt in the other room. And be sure, go on Etsy. Chit chat with Granny Pat. And here's your mug. Take a look at that face. Yeah, it's got that glare. It won't come off. Yes, there I am. Nice big cup. You won't be sorry. Oh, and by the way, I think Jessica is planning to add uh, one or two more items to our list. And one of them will be a tote bag. Every woman needs a tote bag. So I will let you know if that comes about. And you might be interested in ordering a tote bag. And if it's not good for anything else, it's a good conversation piece. When people say, what is that? Who is that? Then you can explain. This is Granny Pet. She's on YouTube. How's that for today? I'll be back with you tomorrow. Thank you.